one here, this arguably is Ed's cootie problem. Uh, some people think the other ones are. We parse it out like this was Ed's really greatest deal. And when uh, after he finished uh, the outlaw and it was touring and doing whatever, he had already decided uh, to build this car. He had plans to do it. Another thing that Ed had that a lot of other car builders didn't have at the time, there's a lot of great car builders, Barris is knocking stuff out. Ed always thought ahead though. Ed had a trailer. Nobody had trailers much for their cars. They drove them. If they did have a trailer, you know, they just used it to go get it when it was broke. But Ed would take his cars on a trailer and not just go to Southern California, he'd go to New Mexico, he'd go to Arizona, he'd go wherever. And the other self, Southern California guys were going like, man, you're driving across the desert in your, in your car. And if you've ever drove a 32, uh, you know, flathead four across the desert or in the hot, it, you don't want to do that. So Ed knew, well, put it on the trailer, he'd go to Cleveland, he'd go anywhere. So he started getting national attention. And Robert Larrabee was starting the auto shows across the country. And they became friends and he invited Ed to go to like Detroit, his auto shows across the country. So Ed started becoming quite a celebrity with the with the outlaw. So when this car came out, boy, there was a crazy buzz around what, it, what did he build this time. Well, that's a super cool car over there. But this car, wow. And I was struck, I was asked to take care of several cars in Detroit, Chicago. Uh, 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 ICA. And I was thrilled that the, what really shows how people, how all of us feel about towards Ed. Uh, I was asked to take care of these cars, and the first morning I was doing it, I, I told Cody, I said, Hey, come seven o'clock in the morning. I said, Come meet me over here by Ed's cars. I got a surprise for you. So he shows up, and I hand him a, a duster, and I have a duster, and we walk into this. This white carpeted deal, and it's got the five most influential cars of the 20th century. Two of them are Ed's. And I gave Cody a duster, and I took a duster, and then we were about to go and together dust these cars off. And we both, what did we both start doing, buddy? We started crying. We started crying. Grown fellas was crying over the, not just the opportunity together to be able to share that, and then we were able to share Ed's birthday also with the cars. And so it's a special moment for me and Cody, but that's the passion that Ed inspired in us. And get back to the car. So this thing here, it's got the same, it's got a, an Oldsmobile mill in it. And uh, Fritz Boy also built it. Uh, Larry Watson also painted it. It's got a Martinez interior in it. But everybody ask about the bubble top. So the bubble top, there's lots of different Miss Legends goes around the bubble top. <laughs> My favorite is Ed took this, uh, uh, had an idea from the jets and stuff he saw running around, you know, the thun uh, thunderbolts and what have you, had canopy tops. So he took a buck, a wood buck, put a piece of plexiglass in it, put it in a pizza oven, and blew it up. <laughs> That's cool, cool, cool. I've heard other deals that somebody in Southern California actually made the tops and Ed purchased it through somebody. I really like the other way Ed told me that way, so that's the way he did. So Ed had the, the insight to, to do that, and he actually tried to use a canopy, a canopy out of a B36, and it didn't work. So he went, and there he is again, trial and error, trying to do it. But this is what he come up with, and it had a power antenna that would make it go up and down and he could do it from a remote way away. He could start the car and make the top come up from way away from the car and everybody's like, what? They're freaking out. So kids literally, again, lined up for all around them by Cobo Hall. They'd be circling Cobo Hall to get in to see Ed's deal. And Ed would see every little kid that was there. He would wait, he's kind of like, Babe Ruth, you know, Babe Ruth would never leave an auditorium until every kid got a signature. Ed was like that. He was all about giving to the kids and letting them see what he did. But on what he did here was the same process. He built a little 
wood deal with the handle of the plaster. He built the frame, got the frame done first. Then he started laying the same deal with his hands, the plaster everywhere. There's pictures of him with this car. He had just covered it and stuff. And he's making this swoopy and all this crazy. And then he does the fiberglass and comes up with the crazy paint scheme him and Larry Watson. Then the steering on this thing, this controls not only forward and side to side, but the brakes and acceleration. It's craziness. And he figured this all out. Now, it, you know, it goes, but I don't think I'd be going down the LA freeway, you know, at 70 miles an hour trying to figure out whatever it is. But Ed wasn't concerned with that. What Ed was concerned with was that this car was going to be sitting in a show auditorium blowing everybody's mind. And that's what it did. And from then on, everybody was like, oh man, you got to see these things. And his deal with Prevail even took off more. So now they wanted to do anything that Ed created. They wanted to be a part of it. And that took off. And it started kind of unlocking a lot of other things for Ed. And Ed was thinking of, of, of all the monsters he was making and all, was incorporating all that into the design, what have you. And it had, uh, more chrome actually than the other car, but all these parts that he designed back here, these all these little pegs, Ed actually hand did all those little knobs and by hand sanded all of them and then stuck them on there. The tedious this of, of putting all those little pegs in there is just mind blowing. And he also started doing uh, more of the mail order stuff. So at one point, I understand that his desk when he walked in, he had people in there and there was just tons and tons of coins stacked on the desk from kids sitting in quarters at a, like 50 cents for a, it, so he had more coins sitting on his desk and he was handling all these, making more money with that than he was the car. So that was another thing helping him be able to develop the next deal. But you know, what a fabulous car. Even to this day, this car could go anywhere and probably get people's choices, might even win out against some super, you know, technologically advanced car show cars. It's just a, it makes your imagination just fly. And I'm sure that the Corvette designers like, like Tom and all, they were just as struck by these things. Because you can see a lot of this in, in later Corvette designs from what these guys grew up with, like all of us, doodling and getting in trouble, drawing head off creations. So there you have the big pink family, guys.